you made me jump. Uh, the only thing you want, because I'm in a bit of a hurry, you know. Um, I was just looking at that chiller unit there. Yeah, it's sold. Oh, is it? Well, there's, there's no sold label on it. Yeah, well, I promised it to a mate of mine. Excuse me. <laughs> How are you supposed to be getting married today? Hey, I'm having my hair done, makeup, the wear, because I want to look good for my hubby. <laughs> just be sorted. Yeah, that makes two of them. <laughs> well, I hope he's still in one piece after last night. He was jogging around Sefton Park last I heard. Oh, yeah. I bet he's still on his way home from this place, isn't he? Go away, will you? I had him tucked up in bed at 11 o'clock with his cocoa. Yeah, well, I hope you're right, Sinbad. Cos if Mick's slurring his words, I'm gonna batter him. And when I finish with him, I'm coming after you. Gone to do his accountancy bit for Simbad. You all right? You look terrible. Oh no, I've just been thinking about JC. We can't stop us being together, Nat. I know, but he means it. He's not going to let us go to a place around here. It's not exactly Mr. Forgive and Forget, is he? So would you suggest plastic surgery, false beards? I don't know yet. One thing's for certain: he's not going to split us up. Not after everything we've been through together. All right, Dad. God, you look rough. What time do you call this? You were meant to open up the shop, remember? Oh, sorry, I just got caught up in all this. It's the proofs of me Bangkok book. I tell you what, there's more typos on this first page than I made in the whole book. Look at this. Moke Dixon and his father, Lindsay Stanslow. I mean, it's going to take me ages to sort this out. Never know. I'll improve it. Morning, gentlemen. Ron, just after a tin of black shoe polish to smart myself up for the big day. Michael. All right, yeah. A bit of dust off the old top hat and tails, eh, Ron? Nothing like a spring wedding to restore one's faith in young love. They are, Ving. That's a pound, that, mate. Oh, thank you. Just the job. Oh, I don't think I could sit through all that till death us do part stuff. What do you mean you're not coming? I couldn't face it, Bing. Not after the way things turned out with me and Jackie. Oh, dear. We could be disappointed. Yeah, go, Dad. I don't mind a shot for you. Oh, will you now? Oh, Jacqueline. Morning. Um, look, uh, about last night... Oh, it's all right, Bing. I know it wasn't your fault. It was me Dad's. Hey, Jack, go easy with us, will you, love? And me head's banging. No, I won't. Well, uh, I'll uh, see you later on. Yeah, for me. I want you around the cafe bar now. I thought I was barred. Well, you were, but I've got no food in. The chef's gone AWOL. And the place looks like a bomb site because of you lot. So you've got five minutes to go and smarten yourself up because I didn't want you alone in the tone. I'll leave it out, will you, Jack? Dad, let's just say it's payback time, OK? That's upside down, love. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> What do you reckon? It's really good. Dead colourful. Yeah, <laughs> it's lovely. Of course, it's not finished yet. Oh, yeah, I can tell him there's still a bit more to be done. <laughs> Any tea on the go, love? Uh, yeah, um, I can't stop. You know, I've got to get off to antenatal. Hey, will you make sure that you tell him only the best for our little sprag, eh? <laughs> there's more tea in the pot, Dad. Thanks, Linz. I'll see you later, love, eh? Yeah. All right. What's this, then? It's uh, one of our Kylie's paintings. <laughs> yeah, I was just taking this upstairs, you know. <laughs> oh, Kylie did that? I expect she had a bit of help from the teacher. It's good, then, isn't it? Do you really think so? Yeah, it's sound there. Hey, Lynn, do you want to get onto the papers? Our Kylie could end up as famous as her granddad. <laughs> Don't be soft. Love, I'm telling you. 
Any kid that can paint something like that. I mean, Jackie, come on, they've got to have real talent, haven't they? Hey, look at it. So you need to send a cheque to the tax office before the 30th. Hmm, the 30th, eh? Uh-huh. I've filled in the details, so I'll leave it up to you to do the rest. You know what, I don't know what I'd do without you. This takes me about three days in the month to sort this lot out, and you do it in ten minutes. I believe it's called genius. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, a genius. Ten pound note, cheaper half the price. Well, I'll have to be putting my fees to put this right. Yeah, uh, yeah, just don't be getting carried away, genius. Cool. My mum needs one of these for the shop. Uh, yeah, I've uh, already had a word. And? I told her it was sold. Well, so why has it still got this on it then? Uh, yeah, and I was, uh, let me get round to that. It's not sold, is it? Yeah, it is. Like I said to your mum, I'm just holding it for a mate. You don't want anything to do with my mum because I'm not in Georgia. I'm not stupid, Sinbad. Yeah, I know. Anyway, I don't care what you think. I'm used to people around here treating us like lepers. Look, Danny, I didn't mean to upset... But I did think that you were one of the few people honest enough to come out and say what you think. I didn't mean to take it out on you, mate. And another thing. If you want to make a success of this place, then there's one thing you're going to have to learn pretty quick. Don't let your feelings get in the way of business. Oh, you look absolutely gorgeous. Thanks to you, lot. Hey, uh, you've probably got a wedding license for the cafe bar and I ran you up a couple of frocks. I think I've done the whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the blushing bride, eh? Oh, I'm a bag of nerves. Oh, yeah. And she's had me up since the crack of dawn this morning going on about flowers, cakes and everything. <laughs> Will it take for the two of us, Julia? It's money well spent, love. You look a picture. <laughs> you won't be able to keep his eyes off you. Oh, thanks. Listen, I want you to have this. Jack bought it for me when we got engaged. Something blue, eh? Oh, thanks, Julia. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, eh? I'm ever so sorry about you and Jack. Just wasn't meant to be. Love's too precious to be wasted on half-hearted measures. Now you look after that fellow of yours because you've got a good one there. The likes of Vic Johnson won't ever let you down. Unfortunately, the damage to wildlife had been minimal. A learner driver was the cause of a pile-up on Queen's Drive this morning. Glad if you see my cufflinks. They're in the bowl on the telly. Yeah, oh, darling, let's have a look at you. Yeah, you're right, Bobby Dazzler, isn't she, Dad? Yeah. Yeah, well, somebody was meant to be back ages ago. Yeah, oh, Mick. Don't worry, your best mate won't let you down. Yeah. <sighs> you all right, Claude? Oh, it's just me hip seized up again. It'll be better next week when the new treatment starts, eh? Yeah, best rice is rain there, night lads. The growing concern for the environment, coupled with the problem of grid loss. Yeah, hey get that on and get your sleeves pulled up. Jackie, I'm not going to be a skivvy, and I tell you what, there is no way I'm going to look like a ponce dressed up in one of these. He's got a point, you know, Jackie. Just needs a penny for that. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm not messing, Dad. I've got enough on my place already, running this place and the salon. I'm about to have the industrial cleaners and to sort out my carpet after you decided to practice some sort of circus act in my bar. Jackie, look, for the 50 million time, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, you can show how sorry you are by getting your hands dirty. All right, Jack. All right, Ron. Oh, very fetching. Yeah, well, uh, I decided to help our Jacqueline out, you know, keep it in the family. <laughs> oh, that's very generous, Ron. Nothing to do with you uh, trashing our carpet, then? Well, all right, yeah, I wanted to make up for that, Ron. Um, excuse us, JC. You can start with the washing up and make sure you polish the knives and forks so they shine. <laughs> I'm watching you. She's probably still getting her hair done. You and me. You should be sitting on a rubber ring, Max. You're asking for trouble on these hard pews in your condition. Yeah, thank you, Chilly. Oh, 
my God. She's a sight for sore eyes. You ready, Mum? Just you try and stop me, girl. <laughs> Not too late to back out, Meg. No chance. Wait, can you put the ring on again? Oh, don't give me. Stunned yet? Thanks a lot, mate. I can really use that, I can tell you. Oh, Jackie's a right little sleigh driver. I wonder that chef geezer never turned in. It's a good job we've got you then, isn't it, Ron? All them chairs need straightening up before you get your gob round ending stronger than tap water. Cheers, mate. Excuse me. When you've finished lolling around, there's glasses that need sorting out behind the bar. Hey, right, Jack, I'm meant to be a guest at that wedding, you know. Come on, Dad, if you don't get a move on, we'll have to cancel mixed reception. And don't forget, you owe me one. Don't forget, you owe me one. Hey, come on, let's have your money, don't you? the way you Looks like you've got a wicked stepmother now, Leo. Oh, well. <laughs> Takes you back a bit, eh, love? Just wish my child was here to see how lovely our girl looks. They leave a gap that's hard to fill, don't they, love? No matter how hard you try. Let's go look. Oh, you should be really proud of yourself, Mike. Oh, sorry, uh, new young writer, Mike Dixon. Yeah, oh, Mike Dixon, as it says here. <laughs> it's going to take me ages to connect all these typos. Look, I'm not being rude or nothing, but these lads seem like a shy. Oh, Ollie's baby, I'm afraid, not mine. I know nothing. Yeah, well, I just hope they do a better job with the selling than they do with the printing. Look, you can put me down for one for a start. Yeah, I'll even sign it for you if you like. Great. Pride of place on my bookshelf. Well, at least that's one sale I'm guaranteed anyway. All right, Dad. Thought you were going to the wedding. I've come in for some money. Ah, oh, Jackie's had me doing all kinds of a flaming calf of theirs. I haven't had a chance to get to the bank. Right, so I'd better get off then. Have you took your wages out the till? Well, I would have done, but it's been dead. Where's all me flaming money? Like I've been trying to tell you, Dad. It's been dead all day. We haven't even taken enough to get the round in. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, you've got to eat all your greens first, though. How are you? <laughs> Congratulations, mate. Oh, nice one, too. See, thanks very much. All the best. And may all your problems be big ones. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, nice spread, eh, Dave? Glad you approved. Yeah? Nope. Oh, have one of these for my Jackie. But she's eaten for two now. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, that's right. I heard she was uh, pregnant. Yeah. Five months gone. Great, isn't it? Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, what's all this about you being a father again? You are. Well, Jackie Cockhill's five months pregnant. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know who she is. 
I can't believe you'd be that stupid. Hang on, Jackie. You're putting two and two together here and coming up with five. Oh, come on, Dad. You and her were living together up until Christmas. It must be yours. Yeah, I wish. Jackie, I would love it if that baby was mine, but it isn't. It's Corkills. I might have tried for a baby with Jackie because I love her. And if that kitty was mine, I'd give her the world, I tell you. And there's people around here think I'm denying all knowledge. No, Jack, if I was going to be a dad again, I tell you, I would be made up. I even had me dress out ready for the big day, and then he ran off. Now he's sitting on top of me with wardrobe and tissue. I don't suppose he'll ever see the light of day again. Oh, you're better off without him, love. A fella like that deserves to spend the rest of his days in the neck. I know. I still miss him, though. Warts and all. Yeah, I felt the same when I lost my Charles. Thought my heart had never mend. But it did, love. Better than ever, and a damn sight stronger. It'll take a bit of time, but you'll get there in the end. I promise. What was that for? Guess you spent the day proving she's not just a pretty face. Oh, yeah. Clinched a multi-million pound deal, have you? Better than that. I think I might have found a solution to our housing problems. There is no solution. Not unless we emigrate. Either that, or we move away from Liverpool. That's what JC wants, isn't it? Yeah, I know. I mean, he had another go at me today. But we can't just stop and leave, can we? Our lives are here. Anyway, I thought you said you weren't going to let him win. <laughs> He's not winning, that. All right, well, what about me? I'm halfway through a degree course, in case you've forgotten. It's not a problem. You can move to another university. At worst, it'll mean that you'll miss a year, but... All right, what about you? You've got a really good job. You can't just chuck it away because of him. I'm not chucking anything away in that. It's not that easy to find the sort of work you want to do. No. That's why I've put in for a transfer. New town. New home. New job. Just me and you. Hello, the wax <laughs> Right, to Mickey Lane. May all your problems be little ones. All the best. You're lucky, guess. Alice, the good-looking one. Uh, well, many are two words, but means just of course. Uh, dear Mick, sorry I can't be with you. You're in my thoughts and in my heart always. Jenny, the uh, proprietor of the Bates Motel. Good Lord. Surely they haven't let her out already. And if you want my opinion, that's asking for trouble. <laughs> So if you'd like to raise your glasses to Mick and Elaine. Mm. Mick and Elaine, Elaine and Mick. And if you'd like to get your disco shoes on, do so now, because it's about to start. And, um, who's Jenny? That's just a woman I used to know. Oh, yeah. She's obviously made a deep impression. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> say cheese. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on up. Cheese. Cheese. There's one for the family album. First photo of the new Babs, eh? I can do better than that. Come on. Oh, is that the Babs? Got it from Antinatal as well. Oh, hey. What a little belter. I think I'll never see you joining forces with her. Hey, if it wasn't for Belle, I'd be right in the mire. Well, things must be desperate. And I'm still trying to build me business back up after all the building work on this place. Now it looks as if this new garage could open up and take what's left of me trade. Now this idea of Bell's, it's me last-ditch attempt to salvage something out of all my years of hard work. It's only something, though. She's got a good head for business. Well, you can't be happy working with her knowing what her kids have been up to. Oh, come on, Sin. Don't you think she's taken enough stick off everybody about those two? She's got enough on her plate, mate. The last thing she needs is the likes of me and you giving her hassle. Max. I, uh, I know alcohol is the classic way of numbing the senses, but I really think you'll be careful. I don't think of you falling victim to a split stitch or anything. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, but I have to say, I do you think it reflects great credit on you going through this operation? Not really. No, don't be so modest, Max. There's many a man at bulk at, um, well, having his manhood interfered with. I, I have to admit, I didn't think you had it in you. It's not. Nonsense. You've gone up in my estimation 100% also. David, David, please. What? When it came to it, when I saw the needle, I couldn't go through with it. And I haven't had the chance to tell Susanna yet. Well, can I have a word? Yeah, sure. 
Well, it's it's about that chili, you know. Oh, the one that's already sold, you mean? Yeah, well, it seems I made a mistake. Really? Yeah, uh, well, it's yours if you want it. You know, I can fetch it down for you tomorrow if you like. <sighs> well, that would be great, yeah. Um, thanks, Sue. No, no, it's OK. Us traders have got to stick together, eh? <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Come on, Mr Johnson. Throw it in the first round. <laughs> Mm. Well, I will be one to get you back to that hotel. Once I've had a waltz with your mum, I'm all yours. Promise. Mm. You know, you smell gorgeous. <laughs> I told you later that I love you. Not for at least ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my aunt used to go to the Grafton every Saturday in the old days. We didn't know. I'd give anything to be able to kick my heels up like that again. You will do, love, once them doctors have finished your treatments. Mm. Uh, 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 Shall we ask the ladies to dance? Why not? <coughs> May I have the pleasure? Oh, go on, then, if you must. <laughs> Julia. Everyone's a couple, eh, Dave? Well, it certainly seems that way sometimes, my dear. Oh, it's awful hard to keep a smiling face when your heart feels like it's breaking. It's been a wonderful day, thanks, love. Yeah? Well, now that I've got you on this dance floor, I'm going to get my money's worth. Oh, one dance is about all I can manage, love. Yeah, I'll be dancing till dawn once I was just finished with you. I don't think so. Hey, come on, you'll be sound once that treatment starts working. I'm not going to have any treatment, Mick. Of course you are. It's all sorted for next week. I don't want it, lad. I'm up to here with x-rays and cat scans and God knows what else. Yeah, I know you are, but they wouldn't be doing all this if they didn't think it was worth it. Mick, I'm not stupid. I know my days are numbered. And I don't want to spend them wired up to some machine. Yeah, it wouldn't be like hey, that. What if all my hair fell out and I ended up looking like you? No, Tar. <laughs> we got a point there. Look, lad. I don't want to see you suffer. None of us do. Right, then. I've seen my daughter happily married. That's what I wanted, wasn't it? Now you look after Elaine, and I'll look after myself. I'd rather spend whatever time's left to me with a bit of dignity, eh? Festive Jewish fair comes under the scrutiny of Rabbi Conway and his team as they ensure that all things edible are strictly kosher when an inspector calls. Next. I think Emily must have got through at least half a dozen outfits a day during the holiday. Never mind, love. You can have a bit of a breather once they're back at school. <laughs> Roll on Monday. I've let Matthew talk me into taking him to some sort of open day at the fire station. Oh, do you know, I've always had a thing about fire bobbies. Lovely fit, young fellas. <laughs> Why don't you come with us? You might find one you fancy. Oh, I don't think so, love. Ooh, I couldn't be doing with a younger fella. I have enough trouble with the older ones. <laughs> No, I'll just stay here and give this place a good doing. Make it nice for the weekend. Any coffee? Huh? Now, you get yourself settled on the couch, love, and I'll bring you on in. Julia, I'm fine. 
You can't be too careful, you know, love. I had an aunt who lost a finger through knitting with a septic wicklow. I'm not about to lose anything, except perhaps my livelihood, if I don't get off to work. Oh, well, as long as you're sure, love. Honestly, I'm not quite sure. Well, don't go overdoing it, Max. Tonight's a very special occasion. Is it? Mmm. I've been waiting ages for it. Ah, oh, no. See, I don't think... It's only three days since my operation. Exactly. And I think it's about time I finally got to see your scar. Get up! Hmm. Hey. Oh, I see. Now that we're married, all the bad habits start coming out, do they? And this is how the French eat their croissants, actually, mate. Mm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's all right, then, eh? Mmm, wish I could stay here all day. Yeah, me too. But your mum needs us back, doesn't she? Yeah, eh? She was having the time of her life last night. Yeah. <laughs> what were you two doing dancing like that? <laughs> we had a bit of a chat as well, you know. Oh, yeah. Giving you the third degree, was she, eh? Ari Lane this, Ari Lane that. What's she like? Yeah, I know. One in a million, your mum, is she? that, love. You'll get yourself and the children ready for your day out. Oh, are you sure you won't change your mind and come with us? I'll stop here if you don't mind, love. I'm not much company at the moment. I don't suppose you've heard anything from the police yet? About that Jack Sullivan, you mean? Hmm. Well, I just thought they might have had some news for you. According to that police inspector, they are busy pursuing their inquiries at the moment. But if you ask me, it's a waste of time. He's long gone by now. And how would you feel if the police did catch up with him? I don't know, love. When he first went, oh, I thought my heart would break. All the plans we'd made for the future. But then I got angry, thinking what a fool he'd made of me, running off like that with all my money and my Arthur's pocket watch. You read about it in the papers, don't you, love? Widow lady duped by heartless con man. Because that's what Jack Sullivan is, you know, love. Heartless and cruel. But now, I just think to myself, I'm better off without him. I think you're probably right, Julia. As far as I'm concerned, Jack's made his bed. And if he's happy lying on evil and deceit, well, he's welcome to him. You're going to wear that out, Jimmy, the amount of times you've read it. All right, all right. Just trying to picture all them arty-farty middle-class types picking up their guardians and seeing my gob stirring out of them over their muesli. Oh, yeah? The nut and raisin industry could be in decline by now, thanks to you. Love, you might laugh, but the point is, that journo took me dead serious, didn't he? Hmm? I found me voice. Jimmy Corkle's got something to say, and there's people out there who want to hear it. Yeah? Like all them customers wanting a pizza, you're supposed to be opening up for Mick, aren't you? Love, it won't be long before I'm out of that place. Hey, we've got a baby on the way, or have you forgotten? No, I haven't forgotten. That's part of the reason I'm doing what I'm doing. Why? What are you doing? I'm getting myself an education. We'll see what that little one beckons to having Professor James Corkill BSc as a father. <sighs> I hope that's the accommodation section you're looking at. Dad, we are trying to find another place. Yeah, well, obviously not hard enough. Well, we said we move out of here as soon as we find somewhere else. What more do you want? Right, then. Wish me luck. Of course we do. Go for it, Mum. I feel really nervous all of a sudden. I bet you it'll be a great success. Let's hope so. Look, I'll see you later for the grand opening, and uh, just make sure you're a help, not a hindrance, Dad. Thanks a lot. Right, see you. Bye. Yeah, see you later. Bye, Mum. Oh, Mum's really excited about getting this new deli off the ground. Yes, she is. So I don't want you two spoiling it for her. If nothing else, JC's little outburst the other night proved me right. People around here are outraged by what you're doing. The sooner you two get away from here, the better. For all of us. 
Yeah, all right, Dad, we get the message. Yeah, well, I hope so. Because apart from anything else, I'm not having Dan thinking that you two are living together with your mothers and my blessing. Can't you just ease up a bit? I won't be for much longer. <sighs> yeah, well, I just want to be away from here as soon as possible. Let's just hope my firm can sort out a transfer. Yeah, that's right, Jenny Swift. Are you going to come and scrub me back? Yeah, hold on. No, no, sorry, not you. So, are you saying that you're still locked up in prison? Uh -huh. Not least for another six months? Yeah, that's sound, mate. Yeah, thanks for your help. Bye. And who was that? That was room service, you know. Rick, I thought you were going to come and join me. Yeah, I'm sorry, baby. What? You changed your mind about me already? No, no, it's just, um... What? Come on, Mick, I'm starting to worry now. Look, I'm sorry, Elaine, it's about your mum. But she's decided she doesn't want any more treatment. You what? She told me last night she'd rather take her chances with the cancer than put herself through all sorts down at the housing. I do like your new curtsy car, Mrs. Farnham. Very nice shape. Oh, thank you, Julia. Mm. Look at that Jimmy Cork. He'll pass off another man's child as his own. Morning, love. Sure, Jack, you're all right, is she? Why shouldn't she be? You tell her to take it steady. Can't be easy being pregnant at her time of life. I'll pass on your best wishes, shall I? You do that, love. <laughs> I wonder which of the fathers will be present at the birth. <sighs> Which one indeed? Hey, careful you. Save all that energy for the finals tomorrow. Are you coming to watch me play? Yeah, of course I am. Wouldn't miss it for the world. And I wish you were coming to the fire station with us. Yeah, so do I, darling, but poor Daddy's got to go to work. I've got something for you. It says you won't be sad or on your own. Oh, thank you, darling. But you can't open it yet. All right, well, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll uh, save it for later. Surprise, is it, sweetheart? It's a treasure hunt. <laughs> oh, lovely, Em. Thank you. Come on, let Daddy get to work. You've got to be really clever to work it out. Well, I think I'll need some help. Now, you two be good for your mum, yeah? And I'll see you later. Stuff your mum's house. Um, some of it's all right. I'm just happy with burger and chips, though. I wish my mum would cook stuff like this every night. Oh well, I'd much rather it. Yeah. Don't you just love Italian food? Oh yeah, I wouldn't eat anything else if I had my own way. It makes everything else seem so boring. Uh, Amos, you should be too busy with this to be getting bored. There's all sorts out there needs bringing in. But damn boxes are dead heavy, Auntie Cass. I'll bring them in for you. No, you won't. You can leave that and come and give me a hand. Now, please. Judy calls. All right, you two getting on all right, then? Yeah, where shouldn't we be? No reason, just wondered. Daniel, will you stop daydreaming and bring the cold meats in from the back, please? Right, Belle, I'll leave you to it, love. Thanks for all your help, Ron. Uh, no problem. Let's hope it's the start of a long and prosperous partnership. Thanks. And you don't mind me taking up all this space? I told you, love. You do whatever you feel is necessary. Uh, as long as there's enough room for my stock. Half and half, like we agreed. Ladies, ladies, please. Now, look, we've all got a mucking together from now on because, well, let's face it, girls, we need this to be a success, don't we? For all our sakes. I'm gonna be fine with my girl. 
Nice one, Matt. You do with a few more lads like you in the service. Yeah. You get to drive a fire engine at 100 miles an hour with a shine on, don't you? You certainly do, son. As well as risking your life and putting out fires, it's dangerous. Don't worry, Mrs. Farnham. There's loads of time for him to change his mind. They usually do. So are you going to be a fireman and all, Emily? No. Oh, thank goodness for that. I'm going to be a fire lady. Oh. <laughs> and who's your little friend, sweetheart? The other fireman gave him to oh. me. I'm going to give him to Daddy. Dad will want a stupid girl, son. You will, won't you, Mummy? As if. Well, I've got one. Keep him in the cab of the tender. See? Can I see him? Of course. You can even sit in your special seat. If that's all right with you. Oh, yes, yes. You come on, Matt. I have a little shower. Reckon I can arrange that, Fireman Matt? I'm just fine, I'm sorry, I think. <laughs> she was always the one telling us to get up and get on with it whenever we suffered a knockback, you know, me and Cass. <laughs> She'd send us down the banks if she thought we were feeling sorry for ourselves. I mean, me and Joe split up. Oh, my mother was always there for us. And when my dad died, right to the end. She was always saying, you and Cass, never stop trying, praying, hoping. Not until your last breath's gone. She's a fighter, my mum, and she always has been. Hey, 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 come on. You've got to be strong for her now, just like she's been for you all these years. But just to sit and watch her die, we can't do that, Mick. She's got to have that treatment. Look, your mum's decided what she's going to do, and you can't make her go through something just to make you feel better, can you? She didn't think it could be so easy. I know, I can't believe it. A job well away from her and a house thrown in as well. Yeah, well, only for the first six months. I have to find her own place after that. We should have done this ages ago. Yeah, well, it's a bit later than ever. Yeah. Lucy, old cow. Perhaps I should go and ask her if she fancies a menage a toi? No, thank you. <laughs> I still can't get my head round it. It sounds too good to be true. There must be a catch. Just thought of one. What are we going to tell Mum and Dan? Oh, I'm glad I caught you. Don't stop. Because I've just been reading in the Echo about this woman from Eighton who had her first baby when she was 48. Julia, I'd love to stop and chat with you, kid. But I've got work to do. Only I thought it would just put your Jackie's mind at rest. You know, with her being past her childbearing in prime, like, and, well... Poor girls grow enough to worry about, as it is. Oh, I. I know you and me have not always seen eye to eye over the years, but I just want you to know that you've gotten right up in my estimation, Jimmy Corkill, sticking with your Jackie through all this. Through all what? Well, there's not many men big enough to take on another fellas. And I just hope that that poor child never finds out who its real father is. Well, I'll make sure it does, cos I'll tell it. You yeah, what? That baby is mine. Mine and Jackie's. Have you got that, eh? I'm the father. Me. Satisfied? You puffed up old windbag. Or is that not juicy enough for you? I don't care. I like it best anyway. <laughs> Every engine has a job to do. They're all as important as each other. I'll stop bickering, you two. What does this do? Press it and see. That. As of the job, get used to it. <laughs> well, rather you than me. Who's up big and chips well anyway, don't they, Ben? Certainly do. Got to keep oh, our no. strength up, you know. Can we have burgers and chips on our way home? Please, Mum. Well, all right, just this once. At least we won't have to sit and wait for that bell to go off while we eat them, huh? Yeah, that's when it gets dead exciting. And dangerous. 
But you've got to find the Sam to keep you safe, haven't you, Ben? That's right, Emily. He's got a job to do just the same as the rest of us. Jimmy? Oh. Hey, love, all right. <sighs> yeah, I was just having a day. It was before I start my shift. Fortify myself for all them wagon tools. <sighs> They're getting to you, love. Let's just say I could do without it right now. You know the way I'm feeling. I thought it was supposed to be a time for celebration, having a baby. Hey, come on, it is, isn't it? Hey, for you and me. Just have to put the rest of the neighbourhood straight, eh? Oh, easier said than done. <laughs> what are you doing, Emma, this time? Uh, I just uh, pop back for something, you know, while the shop was quiet. You can't just close up in the middle of the day. Mick's left you in charge. Jimmy, we can't afford for you to lose this job. Love, stop worrying with you. I'm not going to lose anything. I told you, I've just come back to sort a few things, that's all. Could get used to this. Yeah, let's change our coffee break for a shampoo's break. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Right, a toast, if you please, to the newly opened Manor Park Delicatessen. And all who's shopping. <laughs> Come on, I'll show you the sign. Mm. Well done, Belle. Thanks. And to you, Daniel. You've worked really hard on this. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> let's just hope it's all worth it. You told me. Mm -hmm. Come here, you. Mm. Now, what have I done to deserve that? I'm just preparing myself before I go in to see me, Mum. Yeah. Jack? Oh. Hi, Ron. All right. Yeah, yeah. You? Yeah, yeah. I'm fine. Why shouldn't I be? I just worry about you, that's all. Well, you shouldn't, should you? I'm fine, honest. Listen, Jack, I know things didn't work out between me and you. Rob, don't. Hear me out, love, please. OK, you're having Jimmy's baby, but that doesn't mean to say you have to stay with him. He's never going to change, Jack. Believe me, you're just throwing your life away in a waster. He'll be back into drugs and all kinds before you and the baby are even out the Aussie. No, Rob. Not after little Jimmy. Jackie, you're fooling yourself, love. You know you are. You've got to leave him, love, before it's too late. Jackie, listen to me. All I'm saying is just think about it, eh? Yeah, I will. Because you're worth more than that, Jack, so don't just write up the rest of your life like that, eh? Ron, I'm not. And you know that if you ever need me, I'm here for you, don't you? I know, Ron, and I'm very grateful. But look, I've got to get to work, all right? Jimmy? Oh, my God. <sighs> what are you like, lad? Flaming hell. Just making sure everyone knows what's what, love. I am going to be a father. Not him! Me! Jimmy Corkill, have you lot all got that, eh? Me! Jimmy, you great soft Tiffy. What's he up to now? What's he doing? <laughs> Another public statement from the looks of things. Take more than a felt tip and a length of sheet to convince me. Do you reckon they've all got the message, love? You, Tiffy. You're trying to ruin me street cred or what? <laughs> <laughs> Simmer down, you two. You'll be sick. No, Mummy. You'll be sick after that wine. Oh, well. Come on, then. Hey, Chef. Hi, Mum. You did not. I think too. Now, stop not. it, you two. Just cut that out. Man, you always think she's the best. I am. No, no, stop it. We've had a lovely day, so don't spoil it. Come on, now. In the car. Stop it. <laughs> This is a lovely surprise. Thank you, both of you. Oh, we thought you'd be exhausted. You haven't stopped all week. Dad? If 
Thank you. The shop looks great. Yeah, you'll have to come in with me tomorrow. Oh, we can't tomorrow. We've got less to do, haven't we? Going flat hunting? No, um, not exactly. Actually, we've already found a, well, a house to rent. When did that happen? Well, my firm fixed it up for me today. Goes along with the new job. <sighs> what job? I've been given a transfer. We decided to follow J.C. Bradley's advice. George and I are moving right away from Liverpool. But you can't. You can't. Ollie, tell them, please. Mum, it's the only thing that we can do. I know, I know. It just doesn't make it any easier. I don't want you to go. Well, you know how I feel about it. And there's nothing I can do about it. At least I won't have to witness what's going on between the pair of you. For God's sake, Ollie, there are children. Not as far as I'm concerned. If you go ahead with this, I mean, live together. Then I want nothing more to do with either of you. You can't mean that. I don't accept this. For heaven's sake, what sort of a father are you? Don't you understand? If you're trying to get them to change their minds, you're wasting your time. These are my children and I love them more than anything. And you don't think I do. So you just dismiss my feelings, my pain, everything I'm going through. Well, this isn't about us, Ollie. All I'm saying is, however they've chosen to live their lives, whatever they've done, the worst thing that could happen is that I should lose them, and that's the one thing I'm not prepared to let happen. hangs in the balance. I wonder what it is this time, Pog, and tickets tax evasion. A week is a long time in Brookside Close. Already lost one child. I want to be there for this little one. Are they all right? The Close faces a week of turmoil, starting Monday 8.30 on 4. On 4 now, trauma lives ahead for the Farnhams in the first of this week's nightly episodes of Brookside. Viewers may find some scenes upsetting.
The others can go on to the next quarter. Ah, Carol. Managed to get a box from that shop next to the market. And be prepared next time. Got a meeting at any minute. Don't want to do your shopping. That's Paul. Stacey, you may or may not know that wine tasting is one of the few perks in the restaurant business, and if you pay close attention, you might learn something. told you that I wasn't to be interrupted. Oh, no, it's all right. I said it'd be OK. Jackie, look, I'm sorry. I've got rather an important meeting any minute. Oh, yeah, I know, with Melanie Taylor, the wine rep. How on earth did you know? I've been dealing with her for ages now. She asked me to come along, too. She asked you? Yeah, well, with me taking over the cafe bar, well, you and me, we're members of the same gang now, aren't we? Start CPR. Five to one. One, two, three, four, five. Just let my mother breathe. Please, please. Patient, okay, let's start the next cycle. Right. Okay, I've been standing by, Cheryl. Mummy. Oh, it's all right, Em. Oh, it's all right, Em. Um, Talk to me. Do you hurt anywhere? I need to listen to your chest, OK? Matthew, okay. Matthew is nice OK. Nice and relaxed. Take a big breath for me. And again. OK, another big breath. OK, nice and relaxed. My mate's looking after your daughter. Okay. They're nice taking him to hospital in an ambulance. Nice and relaxed. He's OK. He's OK, sweetheart. Oh, yeah. That's such a good girl. Just a few minutes more. And they'll come and get us. Try and relax now. Try and relax. Nice easy breathing. Michael's looking after your daughter. We need to look after you as well. Okay? Look after your neck. Can you hear me? Joe, you keep your head still for me. Oh, you're going to be all right. Put a collar on your neck. Just hang on, darling. And you'll be all right, I promise. The paramedics are here and they'll look after you. And we'll go to the hospital. Okay. Nice so, this client of mine 
He was explaining how much he enjoyed the gooseberry flavours of this New Zealand white 93, when all the time he'd been drinking leaf from Milch 95. <laughs> well, the waitress had swapped round the labels, you see. So what was I supposed to say? Excuse me, sir, but you're talking complete and total crap. <laughs> so what did you say then? Well, you should know, Jackie. The customer's always right. Now then, tell me what you think of that. Right. Oh. Oh. Fruity. Oh, matured. Mmm. Mmm. Very smooth. Yeah. New world, am I right? Chile in 95? Um, Italian 1996? No, no, no. I don't think so. Sorry, Max. She's spot on. How the blazes did you know that? Well, Max, the easiest way to find out what you're drinking is to, um, read the label. Mother's pinned in by the steering wheel, and there's a little girl that's trapped in the back. The seat frame's gone through one of her legs. All right, we'll have to cut it free. Mrs. Farnham, I didn't realise. Oh, Ben! It's Matthew! They've taken him to hospital. Is he all right? Are you hurt? No, I'm all right. I just can't get it out of here. Well, try not to move, and don't worry. We're taking the roof off to get you and Emily out. <laughs> You've got to get to Emily. I can't reach her. So I'm sorry, Ben. Please. It'll be all right. It doesn't take long. <laughs> I can't even touch it. She needs me. It'll be all right. It doesn't take long. I, I promise. I didn't even see the car till Matthew screamed and it was there, just in front of me. And the children were arguing and, and Matthew, he was trying to climb in the front and he'd taken his seatbelt off and I was really angry with him. I, I, I can't. I, it's all right. I, I, Let's I'm just concentrate on getting you and Emily out. Back down. I should have stopped the car and made them put their seatbelts on. It's my fault. It's my fault. Ah, oh, thanks, Stacey. She seems like a nice girl. Mm -hmm. Max, do you ever have any trouble with your staff, you know, with them copping off with each other and that? Copping off? Yeah, Rachel's on with one of mine, this lad called Christian. They're all over each other every chance they get. Oh, right. Well, I'm um, sat one of them. Both of them. No, see, I could do without having to train new bar staff, especially as I'm going to be needing a new chef if the one I've got doesn't book his ideas up. Look, is this really relevant? I do like what I see, and this looks delicious. Go away. You haven't even tasted it yet. For all you know, it could taste like nuts. You'd know the difference, would you? Now, Jackie, would I do that to you and Max? Hey, it's all right, that Mel. Lovely bouquet. Mmm. Absolutely superb. Yeah, it's not bad. So, what else have you got to tempt me with? Actually, Max, I think you need it. No, I said no interruptions. Max, I think you'd better go and see what they want. Well, it'll be uh, something or nothing. Uh, excuse me, ladies. This should be good. Wonder what it is this time, parking tickets, tax evasion. Now, now. How can I help you? Max Farnham. Hey, he's got quite a history on Max, you know. Emily's fine. The paramedics are doing everything they can. And someone's got to get Max! He's in work! Please, can you tell him what's, what's happened? Uh, the number... We've contacted him already. Oh, it's all right. Emily, Emily, Daddy's coming now. Daddy will take care of us. Well, where are they? I mean, how are my children? Are they all right? Well, can you take me there, please? I want to be with Susanna, all right? I don't care about your procedures. If she's still there at the scene of the accident, then take me there, please. 
It's all right, Mrs. Farnham. Now the roof's off, we can get Emily to hospital. Oh, are they going to put her on that? We should be safe. She won't fall. Tell them, tell them. She's only a little girl. She'll be frightened. It's perfectly safe. I promise. Emily will be fine. Do you got to we just get need me to get her to hospital as quickly as possible. I've got to go with her. She needs me. Keep still, me. Mrs. Farnham. You're going to hurt yourself. No, I'm all right. I've got to be with my daughter. Oh, Emily. Are you all right? She's so quiet. Oh, I, can't, I can't believe it. The girl, it just came from nowhere. It's my fault. It was an accident. Well, let's just try and get you out of there. Oh, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters as long as my children are all right. <laughs> Please, Mrs. Farnham, we'll have you out soon. Just try and keep still. Please, get me out of here, please. Nearly there, just a few more minutes. Nice and slowly. Nice and slowly. A minute, of course. I'm a straight. Where are the children? Oh, oh wait, the ambulance! Stop the ambulance, please! What? I mean, she oh, was in there. Oh, she was just lying in the back. What about Matthew? Where's the Matthew? The hospital. They took him. Oh, Matt, don't let them die. Don't let my baby three. die. One, two, three. <laughs> just get in there, please. Thank you. <laughs> My children! I have to see my children! It's all right, Mrs. Farnham. No, but tell them, Max, tell them! Tell them I want to see Matthew and Emily! As soon as the doctor's had a look at you, and the police will want a word with you two when you're off. For God's sake, Max, find them! Please! Don't leave them all by themselves! Where, where should I be? Ask at the desk. They'll be able to tell you what's happening. Right. You'll need to give them your wife's and children's details as well. Max! I have to know how they are! One, two, three, four, five! V fib. Stand clear. All clear. Check for a pulse, no pulse. All right, let's try again. Stand clear. All clear. Checking for a pulse. Please, leave me alone. I'm all right. Well, we'll take a minute, Mrs. Barnard. I just want to check... But don't you understand? My children are hurt. I have to see them. What hands. There's nothing you can do for them at the moment. They're my children, for God's sake. They'll be frightened. Confused. Oh, excuse me. Uh, could you tell me where my children are? My wife's in casualty and, and nobody's telling me anything. Have you tried reception? Yeah, I've all... Forget it. I'll find it myself. Please help me. Emily. Emily, darling, what's done? Mr. Farnham. Oh, how, how is she? she? She looks... she looks all right. Emily has rather a nasty injury to her leg. <laughs> oh. Well... Will she be all right? Uh, it, it's too early to say. Uh, she'll need an operation on that leg, but at the moment we're trying to stabilise some internal bleeding, but hopefully she'll... She'll be okay. Hello. Hello, sweetheart. It's all right. Everything's going to be all right. The doctor's going to make you better, and then we can all go home. You, me, 
Mummy and Matthew. And... Perhaps we could take a holiday somewhere. Hey, would you like that, sweetheart? Somewhere nice and warm by the sea. You just make sure that you get better. And Mummy and Daddy will take you and Matthew somewhere really special. Mr. Fine. Daddy's got to go now. Hey, you just be good for the doctor. Right, um, I'd like to see Matthew now, please. Um... I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Farnham. There was nothing we could do. There's nothing you could... You mean... Matthew is dead? I'm afraid so. He, he died Please, no. shortly after he, he was admitted. He can't. I mean, how on earth? Would you like me to speak to your wife? No, no, thank you. Um, it's all right. It's all right. Matthew. My oh, God. Hello, Ron. Good day. Oh, ah, oh, yeah. Great. Riveting. Bundle of laughs from start to finish. Oh, dear. Do I take that as a no? Take that any way you like. Oh, come on. Things can't be that bad. OK. Want a bet? Ron, you have a visitor. If you've come to have another go at me, Jack, don't bother, because I am not in the mood. No, I haven't. I was just wondering if... Either of you had spoke to Max this afternoon? No. No, I've just got back from town. Why? Is there a problem? Um. well, the police came in from at the restaurant and he went with them. The police? Yeah. So I phoned the local station and, and they said that Suzanne and the kids had been involved in an accident. A car crash, they reckon. Oh, my God. Is it serious? I don't know. They never said. It's got to be Bing, otherwise the police would never have come round for him. Only I thought Max might have rang you from the hospital to let you know what was going on. No, he hasn't, no. Where are they, do you know? Yeah, they're Liverpool General. Right, I'll get onto them now, see if I can find something out. <sighs> you look a bit shook up, love. I've been worrying about it all afternoon. It looked awful when the police told them why they were there. Yeah. Poor Maxie. But he didn't know what hit him. I've been thinking about it all, Tony. I knew my mum found out about the accident. It was terrible, Dad. Come on, love. Don't be thinking like that. I just wanted you to know that. Hello. Well, I'm sorry for being in a dead bag now. Could you tell me if you hey. had admitted Forget a... Mrs. Farnham? Well, that matters now, does it? Susanna Farnham. Yeah, but I don't know what I'd do if anything happened to you and me, Mum. No, Excuse me, but me and you wouldn't have got you years in us yet. I hope so, cos I do love you. Uh, Mr. Farnham, the uh, uh, father. Matthew was brought in ages ago now. Why can't I see him? We'll get you to him soon. And him. I want to be with them. No, it's not all right. Don't you understand? Emily's only ten. Oh, Matthew, he, she was just lying there. I haven't even seen my son since the accident. Max, did you see them? Are they all right? What's wrong? What's happened? I've seen Emily. Her leg, leg is pretty bad. They want to operate. Oh, God! You know, she was just lying there, not making a sound. I was terrified she was going to die, but... Oh, no, she'll be all right. Uh, Matthew, did you see him? No, I... 
Well, they brought him in first. He, he must be all right, or we would have heard. I, I want to see him. No, you can't. Well, they can't stop us seeing our own Please. son. Please. What Please. is it, Max? No. I, don't, I don't know how. Matthew. Matthew died a little while ago, Susanna. Matthew's dead. Returns to Brookside tomorrow night at 8.30. Next tonight, the hard-worked and hard-pressed life of the family doctor comes under the spotlight in the first of a three-part series going behind the scenes at the surgery. Setting time this is for you. Yeah. But I'm afraid I'm gonna to have to ask your wife to take a breath test. How are you, Dave? Hi. I take it Max hasn't rung here, Julia. No, love, why? I've uh, I've had some terrible news. All right. In here. Uh, yeah, until I tell you to stop, please. All right, Mrs. Farnham. So, does that mean it's okay? You aren't over the limit, but it is telling us that you have drunk some alcohol. <laughs> That's ridiculous. She had the children with her, for God's sake. There's no way she'd be drinking and driving with them in the car. The machine must be faulty. No, uh, uh I had some wine at the restaurant. Uh, just a glass. I think it was just a glass. Uh, you've been drinking. I'm sorry, I didn't. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. Look, can we go back and see our daughter? You can see the state my wife's in. Uh, yeah, of course, sir. Uh, but we will need to see Mrs. Farnham again. Why? We'll need to take a statement from her when she's feeling up to it. Well, haven't you got all the information you need? There are just a couple of matters we need to clear up. Such as? Such as whether the children were wearing their seatbelts when the accident had happened. Well, of course, they must have been. Weren't they? They were arguing. We'd had such a lovely day, but they were tired and they wouldn't listen. I told them to sit down. I did, Max. Honestly, I did, but they just kept going on and on and... I should have stopped. I, I know I should, but I, I wanted to get them home. And then Emily, she was trying. I had told her to sit down, Max, but she wouldn't listen. She wouldn't listen. And Matthew, he was trying. He was. He was trying. I was so angry, and I was shouting at them. I, I told them. I told them I was sick of them. I told them I could kill the pair of them, but I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I killed him. Didn't I? 
right. Matthew's dead, and it's all my fault. It was an accident, Susanna. You don't really believe that, Max. You're thinking exactly what I'm thinking. Why did I have that drink? Why didn't I stop the car? They didn't have their seatbelts on, so why didn't I stop? Why? Ask me, Max, why? Mr. and Mrs. Farnham. Yes. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. I've only just got out of surgery. We're taking Emily down to theatre as soon as we can. Right. And will she be all right after the operation? Well, with any operation, there's always an element of risk. But we're satisfied that her condition's stable enough to go ahead. We need to remove the fragment of metal from her leg. But she'll be all right afterwards. Our main concern is that we're still not sure how severe Emily's internal injuries are. But she's not going to die, is she? I mean, she can't. We've already lost our son. We'll do everything we can for her, Mrs. Farnham. I promise you. I'll have to get a move on. Paul here, they'd be wondering where I am. Don't be late opening up for me. If you need your way, you're just coming in, remember. All right, all right. Stop worrying, will ya? Anyway, even if I am a bit late opening up, Mick's not going to be bothered. He'll still be on a high after filling his boots on his honeymoon. You get away. Away? I don't know. We were getting a phone box. Well, come in handy when we get cut off. Why do you keep going on about money? Stop worrying. We'll manage. And listen, you give me a ring if you need anything, OK? Jimmy, how many more times I'm pregnant, not ill? Yeah, and everyone round here knows who buys since I put the record straight. Listen, don't forget. Yes, yes, All if right. I need anything, I'll ring you. Go on. Ciao. Jackie. I am. Uh... All right, love. Uh, I'm afraid I'm the bearer of bad news. Why, what's up? Little Matthew Farnham was killed yesterday. Oh, my God. Wow. Car crash. Apparently, Susanna was driving. She seems OK, but... Uh, well, little Emily's in a bad way. She's on a life support machine. <sighs> Poor little beggars. Oh, God, that's terrible. Max and Susanna are still down the hospital now. Tragic, isn't it? Anyway, I expect Bing will be organising some kind of whip round for the flowers now. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. I'll just let her let you know. Yeah, thanks, Ron. even a cold. She'll be strong enough for the operation, won't she, Max? Max? Hmm. Sorry, I was, uh, was trying to remember what the last thing I said to Matthew was, and I can't remember. I don't think I even said goodbye to him. I was in a rush, you see. I had to meet that rep. While I was sampling the latest Rioja, making stupid jokes. My son was dying. Don't mind. And that's true. I was having a bloody good time. While I was laughing. My son was laying in a road, dying. So pathetic. Max, we came as soon as we could. Oh, they told us at reception you were here. Jackie Dixon wrote to tell us. Uh, what's happened? There's been an accident, David. Are you all right, love? Are you hurt? No, no, I'm okay. Oh, my God, 
you look terrible? Where's little Matthew and Emily? Uh, well, uh, Emily's in there. They're going to do an operation on her leg. She also has some internal injuries. Oh, no. Poor little thing. Uh, what about Matthew? Is he hurt? Matthew. Matthew is dead, David. Oh, dear God, no. Dead? No, he can't be. I saw him just this morning after his breakfast. Oh, God, I don't believe it. He died soon after he arrived here. I, I, I don't want to say. I'm sorry, I don't. It was my fault. I didn't have their seat belts on. No, no. I should have stopped. Susanna was trying to tell them to put I should have stopped. seat belts. And I shouldn't have been drinking. No, she had some wine when she took the children for something to eat. It, she wasn't drunk. No, 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 no. I'm sure. No, of course not. Of course not. I shouldn't even be here. It's not fair. It's me who should be dead, not Matthew. It, uh, it wasn't Susanna's fault. It, it was an accident. A car just pulled across in front of them and um, there was nothing she could do. Mr. Farron, I was right, love. You can't go blaming yourself. You've suffered enough for our take already. Mr. and Mrs. Farnham, we're, um, we're taking Emily down for surgery now. So if you'd like to see her before we go. Okay, yes, we would. Oh, and, and, and would you mind waiting in the relatives' room? Yes, yes, of course. I say a little prayer for her. Julia. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, Dave, I just can't take it all in. <laughs> oh. Are you all right, Dave? Must be the shock. You are coming to down. Don't worry, darling. We'll be here when you wake up. You'll be fine. Well, the doctors will look after you. Dr. Burton. And then you. The systolic's dropping. Let's get her back to ITU. What's Quick! Happening? Emily! What's wrong? Oh, she can't die. She's gone. What's happening? I'm sorry, you have to stay here. All right, no, please. No, I have to be with you. Sorry, please, Mrs. Farnham. No, she needs the doctor. She needs the doctor. There's nothing we can do for her. She goes to him upstairs, works in mysterious ways, but how could he let this happen to little Matthew and Emily? They're so young. And, oh, it doesn't make any sense at all, does it? No. No, it doesn't. managed to stabilise Emily's pulse, but she's losing a lot of blood from her internal injuries. So we're going to have to try and repair the damage to her liver and spleen. So she's still in danger? Well, it's, it's a complicated operation, but we'll do our best. Here's your tea, Mr. Farnhill. Such as it is. Do you know, I used to set standards in tea making when I worked here. Oh, if I'd have thought on, I could have made some butties before I came last night and brought them with me. Well, actually, Julie, I'm not very hungry. <sighs> what time is it? Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Farnham. I didn't mean to wake her. Mm. It's nearly seven o'clock. Oh, how much longer, Max? She's been in the theatre for hours. I don't know, darling. She's in good hands. The doctors can work miracles these days. Any news? No. No, not yet. I just gave Ron Dixon a ring to give him an update. I expect he'll pass the way around. Max. 
We managed to repair the damage to him in his spleen and liver, but I'm afraid the injury is um, worse than we originally realised. But she'll be all right. Well, she's stable. I'm afraid that's the best we can expect at the moment. After such a serious operation, she's, um, she's going to be extremely weak. And of course, there is the, the other injury to the leg. Does that mean she might? There's a chance we'll lose her. I'm afraid that is a possibility, yes. But she got through the operation, so she's obviously got a lot of fight in her. You'll be able to go and see her in a few minutes. And then I suggest you both go home and try and get some rest. Oh, sorry, I'll have to get this. Yeah, thank you. There you are. I told you these doctors can work miracles these days, didn't I? I want to see you, Max. Would you like us to stay on and give you a lift home? No, thank you, David. Um, look, why don't you and Julia get off home and, um... Well, thanks. Yes, right. Look, I'll, I'll pop into the restaurant later just to make sure everything's ship -ship. And if there's anything you need... Well, take care and, um... Give my love to Emily, yes. And mine. God bless. Hey, come on. You heard what the doctor said, eh? Emily's got a lot of fight in her. Mm. Early starting work. Well, I ought to get back to normal, whatever that means. You know, I almost feel like phoning George's boss, putting a stop to this transfer, and tell him what's been going on. Oh, make them run even further, you mean? Well, if that's what it takes. You know, I can't believe you can even contemplate condoning their actions. Look, they're my children. I can't just watch them walk away. Belle, I don't want to lose them either, but they're giving us no choice, can't you see? I mean, what about Dan? What kind of an example does this give to him? We have a responsibility to teach him some kind of morality. Oh, so, so that's it then. We just cut them out of our lives, pretend they don't even exist. Yes. Well, maybe it would be better all round if they didn't. things. Said a fireman brought this in before. Asked them to give it to Emily, but it's it's not hers, is it? Yes. He gave it to us at the fire station. She wanted to give it to you. It's a mascot. Oh. To keep you safe. I'll keep it with me then. Come in, Julia. All right, Bing. How's little Emily? Oh, she's uh, just about hanging on, poor little mite. Max and Susanna are still at the hospital. I hope you don't mind me coming back here, Aunt, but, well, I just couldn't face going back to the van, hands on my own. No, no. Of course I don't mind, love. Look, uh, if you want to lie down, you're very welcome, you know. You look chicked. Oh, thanks, Ron, but I don't think I could sleep for worrying. Poor Max and Susanna, eh? Oh, it's a tragedy. And poor Mrs Varnham was driving, so you can imagine how she feels. But I told her she's not to blame herself just because she had a few to drink doesn't mean that she deserves this. Nobody does. Oh, how she'll ever get over this is beyond me. 
Do you mind if I use your bathroom, please, Ron? Oh, no, no, of course not. Bing. Um, do you know how the accident happened? Uh, not all the details, no. Um, no, Susanna was too distraught to talk about it, as you can imagine. It's just, um... Well, Julia reckons that Susanna had been drinking. Well, a couple of glasses of wine, as far as I'm aware, yes. I... Why? What are you suggesting? Nothing. No, it's just... Well, can you imagine how you'd feel if you were driving over the limit and you'd ended up being responsible for the death of your child? If it were me, I don't think I could live with that kind of guilt. Honour me, love. Just called back to give you my good news. Your Jimmy is going back to school. Paul Ealy's introduced me to this fella, Steve. He's on a course for ex-offenders. Rob advice is called You Can Learn All Kinds. That's great. Personal development skills, training vocational skills, all that KP, you know. It's for three months and starts on Monday. What's up? Jackie, what's the matter? Oh, Jimmy, it's so terrible, sir. What? Oh, my God, it's not the baby, is it? I told you to ring me of anything. No, it's not. But what is it then? Little Matthew Vaughan. He's been killed. In a car crash. Oh my God. And Emily's on life support. Poor Maxie and Susanna. <laughs> I've just been sitting here, you know, just thinking about how Jimmy and. About this baby. And it's like what I said to you. When I told you I was pregnant. About being given another go. And I might want to say, Jimmy. I don't want to make the same mistake for this little one as we did the first time round. No chance, love. Oh, it's you. I thought you'd gone to work. I forgot these. Did you find George's boss? No, not yet. But don't waste your time trying to talk me out of it. I'm sorry if you've got a problem with that, but I, I can't change the way I feel about Nat and Georgia. God, will you listen to yourself? You're pathetic. Problems, we don't have any problems. You know, we're lucky we have three healthy children. Some people haven't got that. Yes, and other people don't have a son and daughter who are having sex together, do they? So you still think it would be easier if they, um, conveniently died, do you? Why don't you ask Max and Susanna how easy it is to cope with children dying? What? Matthew died in a car accident yesterday. And Emily's in intensive care. So, um, they've lost one child forever. And they could possibly lose both of them. Never, ever see them again. Now, you said some horrible things about our own children earlier, and it hurt me very much to hear you say them, but no, I just feel sorry for you. You may not care about seeing Nat and Georgia ever again, but I do. And I wonder which one of us will end up happiest. If, if we lose him, how do we... What do we do? We won't. We can't lose both our children.
Brookside continues tomorrow and all this week at the same time, 8.30. I can sense it. Not you, Em. What do the doctors say? Well... They're concerned that she's not making any progress. Well, she's just had a major operation. What do they expect? It's early days. You're gonna be just fine. Not you, Em. Just fine. Do you reckon in school that mum got rotten drunk? Ain't that's a terrible thing to say. Don't be starting rumours like that now. It wasn't me. Sharon's sister's a care worker in the Royal, and she said that she had to get breathalyzed and everything. She's right, you know, Dad. I reckon she was legless. Who was legless? So you started here at it now. We were only saying, oh, don't. Max and Susanna don't need rumours like that going around you here. Oh, is your dad in, Gemma? <laughs> Look at this. Georgia Simpson, Sandbrook Primary School, first place egg and spoon race. <laughs> I won that four years on the trot. Yeah, but you know you glued the egg to the spoon. <laughs> Come on, Dan, you'll be late. Much more left to pack? Plenty. Any chance of you helping out, or are you just going to stand there and reminisce? George is about the same age as Matthew Farnham on this. Why isn't that keeping all these? Makes you think, doesn't it? I mean, some of these are from sixth form. Surely you can't want all of them. Ollie. Hmm? Look, they're still our children, you know. No matter what they've done. You know, I used to think there was nothing I disapprove of. I was the paragon of liberalism. Um, free love, smoking dope, drugs. The individual's right to choose, but this, I'll never accept what they've done, ever. Look, why don't we go to the relative's room and get some rest, eh? No, I want to stay here till she comes around. I suppose Matthew's in quest for the binner churn by now. Do you think one of us should have gone? Why? Take the evidence against me. Susanna, please, don't torment yourself. Well, it's true, isn't it? I shouldn't have been drinking. Why didn't I stop the car and make sure they were belted? It was an accident. Thank you. Look, I think I'd better phone the coroner's office and uh, find out what's happening. He's just nipping out. I won't be long. Me? It's Mummy. The nurse says it's all right if we bring your Spice Girls tape in. You'd like that, wouldn't you? I was thinking we might have this baby at home, love. 
Where else are we going to keep her? No, I mean delivered at home. What? Well, think about it. Be brilliant. You and me, bowls of hot water, towels, our own midwife. Jimmy, when I have a baby, I want a team of highly trained doctors standing around the bed at all times. <sighs> think of the risks, Jimmy. I've already lost one child. I'm not risking losing another. <gasps> oh! You all right? Yes, yes, it's just a twinge. You sure? I'm positive. I'll know about it when the real pain starts. Right, well, if you won't let me have an home delivery, at least let me come with you to the parent craft classes. Jimmy. Please, love, look. I never saw nothing of our Lindsay and Jimmy's birth, did I, eh? I want to be there for this little one. I want to be prepared. I'll think about it. Poor little lad. How's the little girl? Still very poorly, I'm afraid. I wondered whether you'd like to make a contribution. Give them my regards, won't you? Yes, I will. I heard the mother had been drinking. Yeah, that's what I heard. I don't think we should be jumping to any conclusions. <sighs> Quite frankly, I think our concern at the moment should be expressing sympathy for Max and Susanna, not bandying around idle gossip when we know nothing at all about the circumstances. I agree. I'll just get my purse, David. Right. Sorry about that, Ben. Listen, uh, I'd like to contribute to the flowers. Oh, right, Meg. Thank you. There you go. Thank you, Cassie. Forty-two pence. Glad you stood up for Susanna back there. As if this whole thing isn't enough of a nightmare without people spreading malicious rumours. Ask me, Mum. Ah, oh, she's not bad. Well, you know your mum never complains, does she? <laughs> no. <laughs> she's just getting under Elaine's skin that she's refusing any more treatments. How do you mean? Well, I thought you knew. Well, no, she decided not to have any more treatments and just let nature take its course. When did she say that? Well, uh, she told me the other day. She told you? Well, I suppose she had to tell somebody. Yeah, but why not me or Elaine? Look, I thought you knew. I'm sorry you had to hear like that. Look, I've got to go to the shop. I'll see you later. Can you hold the fork for me? Well, I'm not sure what Ronald would have to say about that. Tell him to keep his wig on. I won't be long. The nurses are just seeing to her. What's that? Paracetamol. I'm a bit sore. Why don't you let the doctor see to you? It's all right. I don't want any fuss. You know, we're going to have to make arrangements for Matthew's funeral. They've released his body and said we could uh, see him in the chapel of rest. I really just want to remember him as he was. Yeah. So do I. So do I. Should have been me who died. <sighs> Not Matthew. Don't say that. No, it's how I feel. It's, it's what I deserve. Look. Emily needs us now more than ever. She needs our strength. And you need some sleep. And I told Mum. I was going to tell you as soon as I had the opportunity. Hey, you couldn't get us a crossword book, could you, love? Tell his rubbish. Mum, forget the crosswords. There's things going on here that I should know about, and I'm getting it second hand. Well, maybe Mum didn't tell you because she didn't want you to try and persuade her to do something she didn't want to do. So you're happy with her not having treatment then? Yes, no, of course I'm not happy, but when I discussed it with Mick. Mick! Cass. Mick! Oh, yeah, what about discussing it with me? Look, before he came along, we talked everything out between ourselves. Now, hang on. Mick has not stopped us talking. Will and you better shut up and the of you before I bang your heads together? The reason I confided in Mick 
was because I wanted to talk about it and he just happened to be in front of me. The important thing is, not who I spoke to first, but the fact that I've made a decision not to have any treatment. Mum, this is mad. The hospital's there to help you. Look, I know you're only trying to look after me, love, but it's my body. And I don't want to go anywhere near a hospital. Now, will you do your mum a favour and go and get her a crossword book? There's money in me purse. Mum! Now, hang on a minute, you. Just look at the two of you. I'm glad I spoke to Mick about it. At least he doesn't give me the Spanish Inquisition every time I open my mouth. As time goes on, you'll realise I've made the right decision. the coffee you conned me out of. I sold uh, two jars of olives and a bottle of balsamic vinegar. Maybe when Dixon was right, he should have stuck to tomato ketchup and baked beans. Well, he's not doing any better than I am. Have you finished packing? Not yet. No, I was thinking, um, I'd really like to take you there when you go in the car. Oh, Mum, it's all right. We'll be fine on the train. But how will you get all your belongings there? Well, once we've settled in, we'll hire a car and come back for it. No, I insist. I really want to take you. I'm sure Dad'll have something to say about that. Yeah, I'm sure he will. I'm taking his car. <laughs> Mum. Hi. 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 Right, well, that's that done. More's two in the fridge. Thanks. What's for dinner? Uh, pepper trout. Nat's favourite. Nat's favourite. Susanna. I'm so terribly sorry. I, if there's anything at all that I can do. No. Thank you, David. Max, I... I don't know what to say. Not, not now. Uh, David, I, I'm, I'm totally sorry. Max. Uh, what? Look, I... I think you ought to know there's some... There's some rumours flying around. What about... You said about the accident. I, I, I wanted you to know before you hear it from anyone else. Why, well, what's happening? People are saying that... Susanna and, um, uh, Susanna had been drinking. Susanna took a breathalyzer test and it was fine. She was under the limit. I know, Max. So you can tell the local gossips that Susanna wasn't drunk and warn them that if they want to wag their tongues, they better not do it in front of me. Max, I've got to get some there. Yes, all right, darling. Be right with you. I contacted Patricia. I put her in the picture. Thanks. She said she'd like to come over for the funeral. That's very nice of her, but, uh... No. But she... I said no. The hell does she want to come here for? She is your ex-wife, Max. She understands what you're going through. Oh, I doubt that very much. I don't want Patricia anywhere near the funeral. Do you understand? I'll see you later. this accident with Matthew Farnham made any difference to you at all? What? Look, you can say what you like about Nat and George, but at least they're still alive. You know, this is the kind of thing that makes me think that God, if she exists, of course, 
has got a pretty sick sense of humor. What do you mean? Young Matthew is killed in a traffic accident. His sister is seriously injured. And meanwhile, just across the road in the den of iniquity, the depraved Simpsons sail through life reasonably unscathed. Well, doesn't that just go to show how arbitrary fate is? A brother and a sister can be involved in a fatal accident just like that. Without warning, no explanation, it just happened. Well, why can't you accept that's how it is with Nat and Georgia? Without punishing them for it. It's fate. They fell in love with each other. There is no explanation, it just happened. But at least, at least, it wasn't our children who were involved in that accident. Uh, has a Welsh team ever won the FA Cup? Yeah, Cardiff, 19... 1927. Correct. <laughs> Which is further south, Brighton or Exeter? Exeter. Yes. You're bad at this, man. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> let your nan have her tea now. Yeah, you go and have your tea, eh, and do your own work, love. Lainey, hmm? I'm going to have to spend a penny in a minute, love. Right. Are you done, Tina? I'm done. Oh, hello, love. Did you get my crossword book? Uh, yes. I'm sorry it took me time. <laughs> I had to finish off at the shop. It's all right, love. Uh, listen, Mum, I've been thinking. How would it be if I got a night job and looked after you in the day? I wouldn't want you to do that, love. There's no need, Cass. And anyway, this place is full to bursting without you being round here all day. Which is why I'm offering to take Mum back to Ayers and I can look after her from there. I mean, she can get a bit of privacy then, can't she? She's happy here. Is she? Don't start, Cassie. Excuse me before either of you start. I'm not going anywhere because I've decided to put my house up for sale. Since when? This afternoon. And I suppose you've had a chat with Mick about it, haven't you? No, I didn't. Now, will you make yourself useful and help me get to the toilet? Or is you going to squabble about who's going to do that and all? One, two, nice and slow. One, two, one, two, one. I don't wear your pants. Oh. Two. So I'll know what you have to one. go through, love. It's like forcing a football through a big girl. That'll give you some idea. Hey, isn't nature brilliant, eh? Wonderful. Might it not be worth it in the end, you know? Oh, yeah. There's nothing better than waddling round like a duck and having piles. See, for the first time in my life, I really feel as if I'm in charge of me. You know, I'm facing up to my responsibilities, aren't I? Haven't you noticed the change? Well, you have started putting the toilet seat down. Two. It's early days, yes. Right, that's well, fine. Things are beginning to fit into place. Got nine out of ten in the Echo Quiz today. I'm on my way up. <laughs> Can I volunteer, please? Oh, here you are, love. I'll have a go at that. I sprouted two heads or something. What? The curtain's twitching. <sighs> Maybe people just want to offer their sympathy. Eh? Pity, more like. No pity of any kind. Max. These are from the residents. It's just an expression of everybody's sympathy and support. Thanks. <sighs> David, about it. Oh, no, 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 no. I haven't seen it. to watch it together. I swear to you, Cassie, I had no idea she was thinking of selling the house. It's what's making her do it that's worrying me. Well, well, if Mick had known, I'm sure he would have told me. Elaine, you've known him less than six months. I mean, how well do you really know him? Well enough to know that I don't lie. Oh, hiya. 
What's your beef, Cassie? If there's going to be any discussion and my name's brought up, you can do it in here. Yeah, let's get everything out in the open, shall we? <sighs> See, the thing is, I reckon the bloke should be there when it's dropped. I mean, I missed our first two. Well, first one, I was inside, actually doing time. Oh, nothing serious, just going equipped, you know. But this time round, I shall make sure I'm in there at the sharp end. Or the bottom end, as the case may be. There you go. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned, I start college next week. Here, Miss. What's up, love? What are you saying? You are? Dunno, then you've done time. Oh, don't worry. Paul here, he said, it's like facing your demons. Yes, well, up here, I'll have to face me if you tell anyone else here our business. Love, don't be getting yourself worked up. You'll upset the nipper. Jimmy, can we just go? No, hang on, hang on. She's doing a talk now, I want to hear it. Expressing breast milk. The whole point of me selling the house is to be able to pay me way. <sighs> Mum, you don't have to pay your way. Of course I do. I'm not living here without helping out. Glad we're fine. Look, lad. I know the pizza parlor's not exactly making a fortune. So that's why you're selling your house, cos he's short of a few bob. Cassie. Oh, come on, Elaine. Before Mick came along, money was never mentioned in our house. Mick never even bought the money up. <laughs> hey, will you stop talking about me like I wasn't here? What's all you arguing about? It's all right, love. No, Tan, it's not all right. Your mum's married someone who wants to come and take over the running of this family. That is enough, Cassie. You're off your head, you are. Will you all stop arguing, please? You're upsetting me, Nan. Cassie, I think you should go. You what? You heard me. Leave. <laughs> so you're just going to sit there and see him chuck me out, kid? I just don't want any more arguments. Thanks for your support, sis. Mum, I'll see you around. This is all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> And tomorrow, you see the doctor. I'm just a bit achy. It's to be expected after an accident. Well, I suppose I'd better ring Mr. Devine, the funeral director, and uh, organise. I told him we want uh, cremation, unless you have any objections. And then, um. God, I hate this. What are we going to do, Max? I mean... What's the point in carrying on? You shouldn't talk like this, you know. You, you'll end up destroying yourself. I can't help it. It was my fault. I, uh, spoke to Warren earlier. I told him what happened. Warren? Why? Have the police been in touch again? No, 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 no. no. It's just a precaution. He wants to speak to you as soon as possible. Why? Tells me how many drinks I'd had. Talk about my children went belted in. Susanna. It's only a matter of time. The police will want to see me, and then I'll be prosecuted. I killed our two children! Our children, my babies! Isn't that enough? I killed them, Max. Why do they want to punish me even more? Uh, excuse me. I'm sorry to trouble you, sir. Is uh, Mrs. Farnham at home? Yes, she is, sir. You better come in. The trauma continues tomorrow at 8.30, and if you'd like to talk to someone about the death of a child or someone else close to you, there's a free confidential Channel 4 helpline. Call 0800 600 444. Lines are open until midnight tonight, and again on Saturday from 6.30 to 9.30.